Hey, Tom Shaka here. We have a special guest star here with us today. Come on over. This is my daughter, Alicia. Thank you, honey, for doing a video with me. I'm excited about this. This is our first video. Um, the reason I want Alicia's help is she's a nursing student. One of the first things they learn in nursing schools, right in the beginning, is how to use these two instruments to, to check your blood pressure. You can buy these right at CampingSurvival.com. And they're real easy. That's why they learn it one of the first things. So I think it's an important part uh, of your overall preparedness plan. And Alicia's going to show you how simple they are to use. And before this, they were a mystery to me. So Alicia, can you help us out here, please? And yeah. show us how they work. So once again, I'm Alicia Shaka. And today I'm going to be showing you how to use the stethoscope and the blood pressure cuff that you can find at CampingSurvival.com. So first we're going to start by seeing what's inside the stethoscope box. You take everything out. You'll find a tubing that connects the headpiece and the diaphragm. And you're going to take the diaphragm, which is the bottom part that you use to listen, and you're going to insert it in the tube that had just one hole at this end. And you're going to insert it until you feel resistance, and it's in. And you're going to move on, and you're going to face the stethoscope tube towards you, and whatever side, if you can see it's slightly bent in, whatever side is bent in, you're going to insert that facing you with the headpiece. You can go ahead and insert that in. And once you have it hooked up, you're ready to use it. You can go ahead and put it in your ears. And you can test it if you want at the end. And if you don't hear anything, you might want to try and just turning the end of the diaphragm because it ha does have an on and off lock. So once you hear it, you're good to go. And you can go ahead and move on and try to open up the blood pressure cuff box. And you'll find three things once you open this up. You'll find directions, step by step on how to use it, which you can use to go along with this video if you want, or you can use it to come back to. You're going to find this bag that actually has the blood pressure cuff in it, all hooked up, ready to go. And then you're going to find this little key that is used to adjust the meter if it's not already at zero. So you can just use the directions on those and adjust it if need be. If not, if it's good to go, then you can go ahead and begin to place it on your patient or yourself. Today, my patient is going to be my dad. And you're going to look at the cuff and notice that in this little silver box it says left arm and right arm artery so depending on which side of the arm which side of the body you're using which today we're using the right we're going to try to find that right arm artery that brachial artery you can find it by taking your two first fingers and placing it in the outside of the hollow of the elbow and you should be able to feel it actually this is an interesting point i learned a while ago my dad this is years ago I learned this. He was a CPR and a first aid instructor and he taught us all, all us kids and all that stuff. The reason, I think this is accurate, maybe you can let me know with some feedback on the video, but the reason you use these two fingers is I believe the thumb has a pulse of its own in it. So you don't want to check blood pressure or um, the pulse with your thumb. That's why you use these two fingers. I thought that was interesting. I don't know. So once you find the artery, you can go ahead and line that right arm arrow up with the artery. Then you want to fasten it so that it's tight enough that it doesn't fall off, but um, not too tight. You don't want to hurt your patient. Um, once it's lined up, you can go ahead and check again to make sure you have it. And then you can take this meter part, and it has a little hook on the back, and you can just hook it on to this little gray flap right here. Use so that you can easily view the meter while you're taking the blood pressure. Okay, and then you can put these in your ears and get ready. And when you start to inflate the cuff, you're only going to want to inflate it to about um, 180-200. That should be plenty of air, unless of course your patient has high blood pressure, then you might have to go a little higher, but that's for later skills. Um, so you can go ahead and make sure it's locked on tight on so that the air doesn't come out and that's just righty tighty lefty loosey. So make sure it's all the way to the right. 
and you can go ahead and inflate it, like I said, to 180, and you want to place the diaphragm of the stethoscope, the, the larger part, on that brachial artery that you found earlier. Again, you can use, you can find it again if you need to. And you can place the stethoscope right there. Probably won't hear anything, not until you start to let the inflation go. So you're going to want to position it, make sure it's tight, and start to inflate to 180. Then once you're there, you can slowly, very slowly release this. It might take some time for you to get it without releasing it all the way. Um, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it right away. So slowly let it go. And the very first pulse beat you hear is going to be the top number of your blood pressure or the systolic blood pressure reading. And then the very last one that you hear, you're going to hear a series of pulses. The very first is the top, like I said, the systolic number, and the very last is going to be the bottom number or the diastolic um, blood pressure reading. And then after that last one, you should not hear anything and you can inflate the cuff all the way down and you can quickly record your blood pressure and if you didn't get it don't worry it takes a lot of hard work and practice to be able to hear just precisely what you need to hear and loosen that lever just precisely enough so that it doesn't go too fast and you're like whoa I just didn't read anything that just happened or too slow that you're like okay I kind of think I heard it but um like I said don't get discouraged it takes a lot of practice but once you get it it's like riding a bike so one thing I want to go over is just let you know what numbers you get since you're going to get these numbers and you're going to be like, okay, what does that mean? So the ideal blood pressure that you want is you want the top number to be 120 or below or the bottom number to be 80 or below. So once you start getting higher to that 120, 139 for the top number, 80 to 89 for the bottom number, that's going to mean you have pre-hypertension or pre-high blood pressure. And you might want to start talking to your doctor about that or in seeking alternative um, therapies that you can use to maybe bring that down so that you don't have to go on medication. But then once you get to that 140 for your top number, 90 for your bottom number, that's going to mean you have hypertension and you're going to have to take some action to fix that. Which is interesting too, do you mind if I... Yeah, go ahead. Um, for years I was on high blood pressure medicine and with the help of my doctor, I am not a medical professional. Consult with your doctor. But as I said, I was on high blood pressure medicine for years, and I actually got rid of my medicine naturally. I now eat garlic, and I drink apple cider vinegar, and I no longer have to be on blood pressure medicine. doesn't work for everyone. works for me. I study edible and medicinal plants. That's just me. That's how I work. I like that stuff. Work with your doctor on that. Don't take my word on it. Just some interesting information. Um, anything else, Alicia? No, I don't think so. Awesome. So I think that was our first video together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anya. Yeah, thank Love you. you. And, uh, yeah, I think you did a great job. So CampingSurvival.com, it provides, adapt, and overcome. Have a great day.